So what we're going to do for the rest of um, today's class is shift gears a little bit and shift chapters and um, shift from sheer stress to the other kind of stress that we have to deal with. Um, we deal with lots of stresses. So sheer stress, it's getting exciting outside. Look at it. Should be a fun walk. Um, getting distracted. So we're shifting from sh sheer stress to uh, what we call normal stress. And as we do that, we're gonna be looking to, so this is um, chapter three, what we call fluid statics. Right, so there are two kinds of stresses. Um, in a fluid element. Shear stress. So that's what we've been talking about. Tau, tau yx, tau xz, tau yz. Um, lots of different kinds of shear stress. That's going to be defined by, right, like tau yx equals mu du dx, dy. Sorry, screwing up my nomenclature. Du dy, right, so this is the, that's the law of viscosity. That's gonna be dictating shear stress. So shear stress is, a result of viscosity. It's a result of these fluid layers sliding past each other. That's what gives rise to shear stress in fluids. Um, right, so when we're talking about shear stress, we're talking about, um, really we're talking about flow and movement. We're talking about moving fluids, right? You have to have some sort of movement to be able to get shear stress, to be able to, to think about that. So that's something that's related to movement, if there's fluid movement, we're talking about shear stress typically. Um, the other type of stress would be normal stresses. Which we gave the, um, the variable sigma. Uh, and these are fluids um, moving or at rest. Um, both cases, we're gonna have to deal with normal stress. Um, so we've looked at kind of a couple simple cases where the normal stresses were small enough that we didn't have to care about them. But in general, any fluid has uh, normal stresses. Moving fluids have shear stresses. So normal stresses are kind of everywhere. Shear stresses, that's related to movement and it's related to friction and viscosity. Uh, so fluid statics uh, which is what we're going to talk about in chapter three, it deals with um, situations where only normal stresses matter. Right, which is like fluids at rest or in rigid body motion. Um, right, so tau equals zero. Okay, so we have to think about normal stresses all the time, but we're talking about where we 
only think about normal stresses. Um, that's what statics does. So statics, um, some applications. Some applications would be, and these are things that we'll see as we do some examples, forces on submerged objects. So if you have something underwater and want to know what the force is on it, like what's the, you know, what's the net force and what's the moment, and you can do all kinds of fun statics-y type things that maybe you would want to do if you're trying to build a dam or trying to build locks or building a submarine or whatever. Um, if you want to know what the forces are and where they're acting and what direction they are and doing all the statics-y things that you maybe have done before, um, we can do those types of things and we will do those. Um, another application would be hydraulics. Um, hydraulic systems like car brakes or uh, hydraulic lift or anything like that, um, that's going to be the realm of fluid statics, at least primarily because right, the movement is slow enough that you can usually say, well, it's about at rest, so that hydraulic systems. Um, the last one is pressure. measurement devices. So there are a lot of devices for measuring pressure which use different concepts from fluid statics kind of directly um, to be able to, to do what they do, to be able to measure pressure. So if you do fluid stuff, you probably will run into at least some form of these pressure measurement devices. Um, and also like all of the stuff that we're gonna do here has application to stuff where things are moving we're just kind of like zooming in on the easier case to start at least where nothing is moving. Um, okay, so what is that? What does this look like? So we're gonna look at what is the basic um, equation of fluid statics. Okay, so our objective, it's gonna take us a little bit, but we'll get there um, today yet. Our objective is to obtain an equation to determine the pressure field. pressure field in a fluid like we want to know the pressure anywhere anywhere and everywhere that's what we want we want to try to figure out what does the pressure look like inside of a fluid anywhere that we go um, our method is going to be to uh, really use Newton's second law Okay, that's going to be kind of the foundation that we're going to we're going to use Newton's second law. Um, okay, so let's look at look at some fluid, and what we're going to do is pick out a little chunk of that fluid and look at that chunk. So this is a, um, a fluid that's a fluid with no shear stress. It's a static fluid. It's like a glass of water sitting on your desk, not moving. It's a lake that's sitting there and not moving. Um, okay, so we're going to look at what that is. So let's zoom out. Um, 
zoom in on that cube. We'll put some axes on it to just help us to keep track of things. Um, we'll call that Z, that X, and that Y. Um, usually in statics, we call Z the up and down direction just for historical reasons. <laughs> just that's kind of convention, but it doesn't really matter. We can make it however we want. So our cube of fluid would look like this. We'll draw it. Okay, there's our cube of fluid. We kind of zoomed in on it. It's a cube of fluid somewhere in a larger body of fluid. So what does, um, or what can we say about this uh, and the forces on it? So there are gonna be two different types of forces acting on this fluid. Um, the two types of forces are surface forces and body forces. So we'll look at both of those. What's what's happening at the surface and what's happening to the whole thing all together. We'll start by looking at the surface forces. So the surface forces, uh, it's really pressure um, pushing on um, the surface. Okay. Uh, what would be the force of that? So if we imagine like pressure pushing there, pushing there, um, pushing at the front, pushing at the back, at the bottom, that side. Okay, we have pressure pushing um, on all sides of this cube. We could look at that. We're really interested in forces more than pressure. Um, so we can look at that force equals pressure times area. Okay, that's what, how pressure and force are related. Um, a force is a pressure times an area. So we could think of that, okay, so we have a force coming in kind of on all sides of our cube. Um, if we looked at, let's just look at a single direction rather than all three directions at once. So let's just for the sake of simplicity, look at X. So let's call this side, that's P1. And we'll call this side P2. Um, and we'll look at the x direction. So in the x direction, what is the net force in the x, in the x direction? F of x equals, well, there's going to be a force pushing on the left side, pushing in the positive x direction. That's going to be P1A. And there's going to be a force pushing in the negative x direction, P2A. So P1A minus P2A. And those are pushing in opposite directions because like on side one, we're pushing to the right. On side two, we're pushing to the left. So that's where the negative comes in. Um, so this is equal to, right, like delta P, a, I guess really negative delta P A, um, if delta is P2 minus P1. Um, and the kind of interesting thing from this, and this is something you already know, but is still kind of weird to, to see explicit. Um, what matters in this is not the pressure, it's the difference in pressure. Right, so if you're a fish living in the bottom, the deep depths of the ocean, you don't really care that the pressure is 10 megapascals and it's crazy high and it's gonna crush a submarine. You're just like, hey, I'm just swimming here because the pressure inside of you is the exact same as the pressure outside of you. So you're just happily swimming along despite the fact that you're at like the crush depth of like a steel submarine. 
right? It doesn't matter. You're just a fish, you're swimming along. As long as your inside pressure is the outside, it's the same and you don't care. We feel this ourselves all the time, right? The weight of the air sitting on your head is very large right now, but you don't feel it because you have the same pressure inside as outside. So you walk around as if the air doesn't weigh anything, despite the fact that you have hundreds of pounds of air sitting on your head, right? We don't feel that. Um, so that's one of the, like the weird mysteries of pressure. It doesn't really matter what the pressure is. It matters what the difference in pressure is, right? So when you swim down to the bottom of the pool, even if it's a 10 foot pool, you feel the pressure and like your ears pop and it feels terrible and you're like 10 feet underwater. And yet there are fish swimming 5,000 meters underwater, happily cruising along, no problem, um, right? This is, this is kind of a weird thing about pressure that, um, the absolute values don't matter, differences matter, right? So just to, to write that explicitly, um, we could write, so if we had a cube like this, and on one side, um, we have a, you know, a pressure or a force of two newtons, and on the other side, we have a force of three newtons, that is exactly equal to this. 10,000 newtons, 10,001 newtons, right? Pressure Pressure difference matters, isn't it? I, I think it's kind of weird to me. I mean, it's like something that you know and live with, but you probably don't think about that much. They're like, yeah, there are fish that are just swimming like 5,000 meters under the water where submarines would be crushed into nothing, like a little ball of steel. Um, and I have trouble diving to the bottom of a 10 foot pool without feeling like a little baby because of my ears, right? Like it's weird. Um, and it might feel weird, but this is like this is how pressure works. It's the, it's the difference that matters. It's not the absolute values. Um, okay, so this is kind of the simple algebra picture. We're going to put it in a differential equation picture, so that right this was our little tiny cube. We want to be able to look at kind of everything. Um, so if we shrink our cube and shrink our cube and shrink our cube till it's super super tiny. Um, we can write the same equation, but in differential form, where that our uh, so our differential um, force in the x direction is equal to now the the change so minus uh, so delta p that's going to be dp dx times dx. Um, Right, this is like delta P. And then this is dy dz, right? That's the equivalent of A. Um, so the delta P part looks a little weird. This is the, right, the rate of change. Um, and then dx is the distance over which the change occurs. Um, so dp dx, that's like how fast pressure is changing as we move from the left side to the right side. And the dx is like we went all the way across the whole cube. Um, it's a Taylor series approximation of what the difference is in pressure, but it's not super important. Uh, but that's where it comes from, right? It's, it's the delta pressure, the difference in pressure from the left side to the right side. Okay, so that's our surface forces. That would be just the X direction. We could look at it again in kind of vector format. Um, and Uh, we would have it in 3D. 
we would get the same basic equation for the forces in the y direction, the forces in the z direction. So they would have a like a dp dy, dp dz, and then they would have a dx dy dz. dx dy dz, that's just the volume. Um, so we're going to simplify this, and this would be the d. Um, right, this is equal to minus right, dp dx i hat because that's the x direction plus dp dy j hat plus dp dz k hat times the differential volume. So this is the Right, which is dx dy dz. Okay, so that's kind of a, a pain to write out the whole thing in vector notation every time. So we have a, just a more compact way to, um, to write this. So we can, this is exactly equivalent, but we can write this as minus the gradient of pressure d volume. Right, where the gradient of the pressure is the part in brackets. Um, right, the gradient is just the like the slope or the change in pressure in the coordinate system. Okay, so that gives us our surface forces. Um, in like three dimensions in vector notation with differentials so we kind of got all of our bases covered um, that's one of the two forces that we have surface and body okay so our body forces our body force is gravity so if we go back up and I'll zoom back up to our little cube, if we say, okay, how, what is the force of gravity acting on our cube? The mass times G, right? So what is the mass of our cube? Well, we could look at it just generalizing it, the density times the volume. So let's do that. So our body force, force of gravity, um, so we'll write this FB equals force of gravity equals mass times gravity. Again, if we shrink things down and make it a differential cube, a really, really small one, we could write that as um, our differential body force equals um, our differential volume times rho times g. So now we want to do a look at the total force. So the total force acting on our cube is the force acting on the surface plus the force acting on the body of our cube, which is, I'll divide by this differential volume, and then the surface force is minus the gradient of pressure, and the body force is rho times gravity. Okay. So that's the force per unit volume acting on a, our differential fluid element, our little cube. Um, in fluid statics, so a static fluid, and we are almost there, a static fluid by definition has 
no acceleration. So kind of everything we've done up to this point hasn't depended on whether the fluid is moving or not moving or whatever. It's just that was the, the normal stresses and normal forces in any fluid element. We're going to say, okay, so the special case where there's no acceleration, where we have a static fluid. So that means that, right, F equals MA. So if A is zero, the net force has to be equal to zero. Right, this is just from, from Newton's second law. So all we're doing again here is just a force balance on our, on our little cube and we're saying F equals MA so we know the forces have to balance each other out because we don't have acceleration. This gives us then our fundamental equation of fluid statics, which is minus gradient P plus rho G. Right, and just, um, so this is for um, a static fluid. Another way of saying that, no shear stress. And um, gravity, the only um, body force. Which again is often the case. Very rarely is there another body force, like a magnetic force, for example, that's acting on a fluid because not very many fluids are magnetic, usually just gravity. Okay, so this is the, the general, and this is the equation that we're gonna be using to look at pressures in static fluids. Um, there's a, a special case, a special simplification that we can often use. This is kind of the general equation that we can use for any static fluid. Um, there's a nice special case Right, which I'll label a special case so it reminds us that this is kind of a, a subset of the top equation. That would be for something like this. Or if these are our axes, this is z, this is x, that's y. If in if our axes happen to be such that g looks like that, so right, gravity. acting down. So if you just so happen to choose axes that gravity is straight down, uh, it's only in the z direction, so we don't have to care about x and y because there's no gravity in x and y. Then we have to care about only the z direction and we get the simplification that dp dz equals minus rho g. That's no longer a vector. Um, okay, and for this is, I guess this really changed, this really is true for both, um, both of these equations, but technically, um, G varies with Z, varies with height, um, so you will technically weigh less if you climb to the top of Mount Everest than you do at sea level, um, but it is not an effective weight loss technique. Um, you'll weigh less, but it's so tiny, nobody cares. Um, so gravity does vary with height, small enough that we typically ignore it. Um, also density varies with pressure. Um, typically, we ignore both of these facts. Um, often we can without messing up things too much. Depends on exactly the situation and how accurate you need to be. Um, but kind of the, 
so the interesting thing, and we'll end here, um, about these two equations is, right, if you are trying to look at, say, you have a, you know, a huge, let me write, draw this better. You have a huge tank of water that happens to spring a, a little hole in the bottom that's leaking. If you want to plug that hole, it is exactly as hard to plug that hole with a huge tank of water as it is to plug the hole at the bottom of a little tiny skinny cylinder of water, right? Those are going to be exactly like you can put your thumb in the bottom of that huge tank and it's going to be exactly as hard to plug that as it is to plug the bottom of a skinny tube. That's the exact same height. Um, so one of the, right, the kind of key thing there, the pressure is really becomes only a function of density, gravity, and height or depth in the fluid. So we'll use that as we start to, to build out fluid statics problems. Some of them um, can get kind of, I don't know, a little interesting to try to think through, especially if you have multiple fluids or different angles or stuff like that. So we'll do some of that. And we will start that uh, next time. But with that, happy Friday. Um, everybody do the penguin walk as you walk on the paths. No slips and falls, right? Waddle like a penguin. Um, but have fun playing in the snow. Don't hit any little kids with snowballs. Uh, Dr. Christian. Uh, yes. I had a 